Hello, Drive Intelligence community. This 2002 F-150 has been getting a lot of love on my channel lately, but I've got other projects going on. One thing that uh, I, one vehicle that I have in my driveway that has a lot of uh, following uh, from my community is a Cadillac. It's a 99 Cadillac DeVille. This, this model was 96 to 99 with the V8 North Star engine, which is a, it's an amazing engine with problems. <laughs> Um, but one of the uh, followers was asking about the self-leveling system in the back and if there was a way to, uh, I don't know if they were asking me how to fix the sensor or to acquire another sensor. Well, it I was reminded of this request when I went through the junkyard and I saw two DeVilles, a 90, I think it was a 94, 95 and a 99. I took the level sensors off and uh, I'm going to show you where they were in, on the junked vehicles and I'm going to test those sensors on this car which is gonna basically show you how, what the operation of this, uh, this self-leveling system is. Don't go away. This DeVille only has about 120,000 miles on it, uh, but the front bumper was pushed in in a uh, relatively slow speed accident. And you can see some damage. Uh, if you go back to my uh, DeVille series, you'll see the uh, the actual damage and me taking this apart and trying to fix it. I haven't finished trying to straighten this out yet, but the engine still runs, radiator still holds water, um, but it's just pushed in a little bit and I've got to get new body panels for it. Anyway, the uh, self-leveling system, at least the sensor, is behind this left rear wheel. So what I'm gonna have to do is, uh, actually I need to re-level it. So I'm gonna level it with the existing sensor. I'm gonna have to hook the battery back up I'm going to take the wheel off, which gives me good access to the stock sensor. I'm going to take that sensor off, and then I'm going to connect the, the uh, sensor I pulled out of the junkyard electrically, and then I'm going to articulate it to show, or at least to test and see if it does move the vehicle up and down in the back. I've hooked up a mobile battery charger. I've got it on 25 amp charge, and it's actually filling up the rear suspension. You can hear it slowly but surely. That battery start feature didn't get it started, so I've got it running and the back end is level. So that level sensor is working properly, which indicates that the, uh, the controls in the vehicle, other than the sensor, are also working properly for level control. While I'm letting that run for a minute, I'm going to show you a cleaned up uh, sensor I pulled off the Boneyard vehicle. This probably came off the 99. Um, it's got one connector here. Uh, you cannot disconnect it on this side. You can open this up, but it is a, uh, I'll show you in a second how this is a, uh, a potted system. This connects to the suspension and this arm articulates with the, uh, the rise and fall of the rear end. So once I get the, uh, the rear wheel off, we'll see how that looks on the vehicle. Good example of what happens when you leave a vehicle sitting for too long. This has been several months, got rust here. Anyway, there's the level control sensor. That's the little arm. So this articulates up and down with the suspension. And I'm going to connect the other one electrically from underneath. There's a, a connection underneath the vehicle and go from there. Safety first. I've got two jack stands under here. Now I've got to crawl underneath there and do the disconnect. While I'm doing this, I'm going to show you how I pulled these off of the junkyard vehicles. So uh, enjoy. There's no better place to learn about vehicles than in the junkyard. This is a 1995 DeVille. I'm at the left rear of the vehicle with the wheel off, you can see. And that right there, that arm that I'm articulating is the level sensor. The suspension is connected to that arm with this rod. I've already disconnected that and I'm gonna disconnect the sensor with these two bolts here and then electrically disconnect it so I can take it home. This DeVille had its auto leveling system disconnected. I guess it failed and they put a standard shock in here with some extra coils on it to keep the rear end leveled. You can see here the air fitting, the air hose, it's, it's not connected to the shock, but the, uh, the level sensor is still in there. Here are the two level control sensors that I got off the two DeVille's. One's off a of 95, the other one's off a of 99, but they're pretty much identical. Um, I want to test these and see what's going on with them if, they, uh, if these still operate. I, I bought these out of curiosity, and uh, if they work, I'm going to sell them on eBay because I don't need them. But somebody that uh, is following my DeVille series was interested in this. They have six pin connectors. I need to figure out which each of these pins is for, so I'm going to have to do some research 
to figure out what the electrical diagram is associated with this. And, uh, and then once I do my initial test, then I'm going to open them up and see what's in here, see if it's serviceable, cleanable. And, uh, and then, like I said, if, uh, if I can get these operating properly, I'm going to go ahead and throw them on eBay and I'll put that link below. While I'm trying to find a suitable wiring diagram for this level sensor, uh, I'm going to take it apart. I haven't found that wiring diagram yet, but I want to see what's inside this thing. Um, what I have been able to determine is that the articulation of this up and down completes the ground to uh, the relay. And that's what, when it's in one direction or the other, it tells the compressor to turn on or the exhaust to open. So I want to see what's going on inside here, and uh, we'll go from there. So I've uh, taken it apart, got all the little screws out, and to take the cap off, which is pretty easy to get off, and you can see that this is a, uh, a potted, I guess we'll call it potted, circuit, and uh, which means there's all kinds of, uh, it's, it's immersed in plastic to protect it from moisture. Um, you can see that there's some discoloration on the board. I'm not sure if that indicates there's a problem or not. But uh, I'm just going to have to figure out how to test this, and there might might be the only way I can test this is to put it on a Cadillac and uh, articulate it to see if that causes the compressor or the uh, the exhaust to turn on. After disassembly and cleaning, I've reassembled most of this, but uh, there was a learning that I found on the internet as I'm doing more research on this that this arm is adjustable. Uh, it gives you some adjustment range on the ride height. Uh, depending on where this is on this arm can give you some uh, some diff additional ride height or reduced ride height if that's what you're looking for um, so if you do that to do it at your own discretion I uh, this is what I found it's a little hard to find any information on these but that that is an interesting element of this this is an adjustment on the uh, on the electronic level control module in my past industry, this is what we called an eye chart because it's just so complicated and small, it's difficult to see. But in any event, this is the only diagram I was able to find on the uh, electronic level control system. It's not, I don't believe this is specific to the 99 DeVille, but it is for the Cadillac and it is very descriptive of how this system operates. At the bottom of the diagram, you see the automatic level control sensor. And on the left side, you'll see the B connection, which is indication for a vehicle riding too low. Normally, that, uh, that connector is open until the vehicle is too low. It'll close, activating the automatic level control relay, which causes the, uh, the, the relay to close and provide voltage to the compressor. The compressor then pumps up the rear shocks until the level is at the appropriate uh, predetermined level and opens the circuit once again at, uh, at connection B. Alternately, when the vehicle, for example, people get out of the vehicle, or you take a big load out of the trunk and the, and the vehicle rises, then the uh, circuit at point E, the connection E, is typically open also. It will close when the vehicle is too high and that will complete the circuit for the exhaust and the exhaust solenoid will open up and allow the air to escape the shocks. Similar to what happened at point B, where that connection stays closed until the vehicle arrives at the predetermined ride height, uh, point E will stay closed until the vehicle reduces down to the, that same predetermined ride height. Then we'll open and turn off the exhaust. This diagram is excellent for reference if you have a, a, a Cadillac with an automatic level control system, so you should snapshot it with your phone or take a print screen on your computer. There's a dirty level sensor, and there's an electrical connector toward the middle of the vehicle, which makes it real fun to get to. Oh, there we go. So you can see it. I'm going to disconnect that and connect the other one. This is a better view of the electrical connector that's slightly forward of the cross member that holds the rear suspension together. And now for the bourbon bolt of the day. That one bolt that the automotive engineers wanted to make sure was as difficult as possible to drive you to the bar after you finished your maintenance activity. Certainly a bourbon bolt or a bourbon connection. I got it connected with a lot of effort. I had to get my hand behind that cross member. And uh, so now everything's ele connected electrically. I've got the uh, sensor right here. I'm going to move the arm once I turn the key on and see if this operates. The suspension is operating. Let's see if I can turn it off. There it goes. It's off. 
So I heard an opening of the valve, uh, the exhaust, and the, uh, the suspension is dropping. So let's articulate it back in the other direction once again. All right, so it's popping up again because I articulated it up. Let's test the other one. Now, one of the two Cadillacs that I pulled this from actually had uh, assist springs on on the shock, so that means that uh, I, I think that the system was not working. I don't know if it was the sensor or the uh, something else in the system, and right now I'm not getting any activation. It might have been the sensor that wasn't working on that car, and that's why they went and uh, installed assist springs and did not have a self-leveling system anymore. Yeah, I'm not, uh, not getting anything here. That's it for this video. I wanted to focus on the electronic side of the electronic level control system and specifically the ELC sensor. If you have questions about the mechanical side, leave a comment below and be pretty specific about your question so I can focus on that. Uh, there's a lot of elements to it. I'm going to list the one sensor that's good in my eBay store with the link below. So check that out if you need an ELC sensor. Otherwise, I hope you liked the video. Remember, thumbs up. That really helps my channel. Uh, and please subscribe. And I'll see you next time on Driving Intelligence.